afternoon. Welcome all. Uh, so we are in our fifth seminar today. Uh, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, I welcome Mr. Jacob Isaac to this session. Before we begin, I would uh, request Akash Philipmani, Theobald House Captain, to lead us in prayer. Akash, are you in? Uh, yes, ma'am, I am. Akash, would you please lead us in prayer? Sure, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, God, for giving us this day and this prefect seminar. Thank you for giving us these teachers and this opportunity to organize us ourselves and grow as leaders together. Oh, Lord, help us all to take the lessons we value today from heart and apply it to all aspects of our lives. Oh, Lord, help us in our upcoming exams and let us do our best and try hard to fill, fill our duty to the school and the teachers. O oh Lord, thank you for giving us this day and our responsibilities and help us to do our best in all things that come forward. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Akash. Over to Sir, Mr. Jacob. Uh, Mr. Isaac, you're muted. <clears throat> Just a minute, yeah. So good afternoon. How is everyone doing? Good to see you all. And uh, uh, yes, we are doing the fifth session. And... Uh, Trying to keep it as simple as we can with a little time, and I hope you are applying what you are learning here and uh, do a little more reading. Okay, do a little more reading and uh, talk to each other, see how you can apply it in your particular roles at school, right? And uh, wherever you get opportunity. Uh, use what you're learning. And that's one way of keeping, you know, you focused on what you have to learn from each other. Here's a quote. <clears throat> Anyone can steer a ship, but it takes a leader to chart the course. Right? And... Uh, well, you, at times we may think like now that I'm a leader, just being on the team, I'll be able to learn how I can become a leader. While that is true, you may learn from observation. But I want you to know that just being on the ship, if you look at your whole team as a ship, is not enough, right? You need to chart the course. So every one of you have different roles and every one of you is expected to fulfill that role differently, right? Some of you are prefects and captains and you have very specific roles. So why don't you put down in the chat, what role do you have to play? Just to give me an idea. How would you describe your role? Okay, would you mind putting it on the chat so I can see what, what kind of leaders we are dealing with out here? 
Okay, and I'm looking at the chat box, waiting to see what comes in. How would you describe your role? Maybe you can mention your role or your title and then what you need to do to fulfill that. So if you're a prefect, prefect of which class, Abhishek? Okay, so mention that. And what do you do? Describe one or two things. That'll help us understand one another and see how you have understood your own role. Okay, school captain is an adhesive that keeps the entire act together. That's an interesting uh, definition of a school captain. Vice captain to help and encourage others in the house and the per prefect body. Okay, yeah, and it becomes a perfect body. Thanks, Preeti. That's a good response. Example, guide, be fair to all, encouraging participation and activities. Okay, go ahead. How many in attendance? 57, including teachers and uh, me. Okay. So I'm sure there are at least 50 participants. Encourager, help others, lighten the burden, encourage participation in activities, example, guide, okay. <clears throat> Correct those students who go off track, encourage others to take part in events, assist the school captain and the rest of the team to help enable them to become the best they can be. Foster house spirit, Shreya, okay. Okay, Samia, class 10, intermediary between the captains, vice captains, teachers, and students. Okay, that's a good broader uh, definition. Okay, and I hope all of you are uh, listening to each other here. Because this is one way you can also learn what the seniors are saying if you're new to it. Apart from all the orientation and teachers that teachers have given you, right? Mm. Okay, intermediary. Junior leader assists the senior leaders and encourages the students to have a healthy participation. Junior prefect to encourage the junior Wilcox side to participate, okay? Example, participation, encouragement, key themes that are coming again and again, okay? Collaborate is a new word now. Approachable, trustworthy leader, okay? Just imagine if you put that all together, what a, a broad description you're gonna get of who a prefect is. Okay, most of you talk about participation, right? And particularly on sports day or even otherwise. Okay, sports day is fun because you're cheering your team onward, okay? Develop communication skills, yes, to encourage students to tell them what has to be done and so on, okay? All of you managed to put there, put a word at least. Okay, good, good. I'm waiting for a few more before I continue. Collaborate exemplary. 
Okay. Uh, Jacob, I uh, just wanted to say if everybody can chat in the open, <laughs> we also can participate. I think everybody is chatting directly. Oh, now. they're doing it person. Sorry, I didn't yeah. realize. Why did they do that? It should be. <laughs> yeah. So, prefix just uh, chat in the open so that others can. Yeah, yeah, please. Always chat in the open. That's why I was telling so, others should read uh, it. The option is not there to chat yes. with everyone. Yes, sir. Oh. Chat to everyone has been disabled. We can only chat with the host. Okay, and usually post. that's a setting. Yeah. To avoid any unwanted thing. Okay, so okay, done, done, done. Yeah, right. this time it's okay. We understand. No, I've but, changed uh, it. I've okay. changed it. Changed it. Okay. Okay. Can you all just quickly put it in the open, also, please? We'll take a few minutes. Anyway, you've written it. You just cut and paste in the open. If it's still, you can still see it. Your message. Yes, I didn't realize it was all directed to me, to me. <laughs> so. Okay, students. This time you should get an to everyone response. Just make sure you do that so that others can also participate. And looks like the common theme that you'll have mentioned is encourage, collaborate, exemplary leader, right? Assist. Those are some of the words. And uh, correct, encourage participation, be a guide, be an example. And the school captain is the adhesive that keeps all these ideas together, looks like, isn't it, Granville? I try so. Okay, that's your description, so that's right. <laughs> but thanks again, thank you, yes. So what are we saying? Anyone can steer the ship, but it takes a leader to chart the course, okay? So do you have a course of action for your role? specifically okay and while there are broad guidelines and general instructions given by the school teachers and you know prefect in charge but i think it's important also that each of you think how can you okay take this forward so for example let's say encourage participation how will you do it Right? That's going to be a huge question. So we'll keep that in mind. And a little later, we'll get into some more interaction about it. Okay, here's another quote. Right? Because when you're charting a course, and if you prepare well, you convey confidence and trust to people, particularly your team, your classmates the other prefix and so on. Leaders who are good navigators are capable of taking their people just about anywhere. Okay, charting the course, navigation, right? These are the words that we are looking at as we go. Here's another quote, right? It's not really about blindly following the leader as much as it is about the leader charting the proper course for his or her followers. <clears throat> so you must be getting an idea of what exactly we are trying to do today. Okay, we are focusing on this topic, the law of navigation. Right? And we've talking about different uh, laws that John Maxwell has, is introducing to us as leaders, right? We talked about priorities, then law of the lid, and so on and so forth. So when we, when I was looking at this, I came up on an interesting uh, focus on two people who navigated their way to the South Pole. And it'll be interesting to see what they discovered, right? And someone said, uh, if you've ever read tales, in fact, John Maxwell, 
of early expeditions to reach the South Pole, you'll know that poor leadership isn't just inconvenient, it can be deadly. So in other words, right, if a leader does not chart his course and navigate properly, he's putting the whole team, the rest of them, in danger. Okay, starting with Granville as a captain, right? I remember my first role, uh, you know, being in leadership, and I was quite young, and uh, I felt the role was not too significant. Of course, captain, like he says, is an adhesive, and he has to, you know, busy trying to stick to things, if that's what you mean, right? And uh, so what happened, I began to feel, oh, they won't miss me, right? And uh, what happened as a result? I wasn't giving my best to the team until I was reminded by the you know, leader that I am important. And that line, when he shared that with me, it take a, took a whole new turn and encouraged me to give more to my role, okay? And so remember, now these, this story that we have is very interesting. Roald Amundsen, right? I think he's a Norwegian. And Robert Scott, very famous expedition. There's a lot of information about these two people. Um, Robert Scott was an Englishman and he was commissioned by his country to go to the South Pole. Now, Amundsen had already gone on these expedition, okay, particularly to the North Pole, and he was quite familiar, uh, you know, with that kind of terrain. And in fact, I think deep down, he wanted to be the first one to reach the South Pole, oblivious to Robert Scott. And so, Interestingly, he didn't even tell his other teammates what his plan was, except for one or two, and he changed his course and began to move towards exploring the South Pole. And what do we read about the two of them? And of course, both of them did reach, did reach South Pole, right? And uh, Roald Amundsen, came back successfully, and unfortunately, Robert Scott and his team never made it back. Okay, that's how this whole expedition went on. Um, for a long time, Roald was, you know, crowned the man who saw South Pole first, okay? But later on, when they realized what had happened and that they felt, you know, somehow the whole purpose of Royal going there, while it was, yes, to explore, and he did go there successfully, but Robert was sent on a more of a scientific expedition, okay, on 12 different aspects, and he did a good job, and unfortunately, and that's what I'm trying to share in this whole episode, is what exactly happened, and what did they do wrong? If you look at their uh, you know, what they did right or wrong, I'll just uh, look at some details that I have and I'll be able to share more clearly. It's interesting. When we look at their um, means of transport, okay. Now, I told you that Amundsen had much experience with sleds. And all of them on his team could ski well, okay? Because unlike uh, the United Kingdom, there's a lot more access to, you know, what they did and their expedition North Pole and the experience he had. But what about Robert Scott? He was criticized for his choice of transport. In fact, that was his undoing and they could not make it back. They died, they froze to death. Um, he, they say he failed to insist that all his team members learn to ski. Because unlike Amundsen, they depended on motor sleds, okay? 
And unfortunately, one sled was lost and two others became unreliable. And therefore, they could not make much progress. Therefore, what he was used to and he chose to use was what is called man hauling. Okay. And so man hauling is very tiring for the men and left them exhausted. And that was his undoing. Now, going back to Amundsen, he used dog sleds and manage them well throughout. Remember on an expedition like this, um, you know, you can run out of fuel, you can run out of uh, food, you know, dogs can become a burden to you. They say that out of 52 dogs that went along with him, so he's very well equipped, 22, okay, wouldn't go well with the human rights or dog rights people today because 22 of them, they killed periodically, okay, uh, to sustain themselves in terms of meat, okay, for the team and you know, to feed the other dogs. Very interesting. I thought that was ghastly, but the way he managed it, and only 11 of these dogs returned alive. But the good thing is the sleds provided speed and the much needed rest for the men. Okay, so notice, they charted a course, but we are talking about how they navigated. What did they do to survive? Scott, on the other hand, they used man hauling, and look at the man hauling methodology. Very, very, you know, not easy, because dogs could, they're used to that terrain, they're trained to do it, and they can really move on high speeds. So let's look at the other thing, the weather. Okay, what was the weather like? Now, the timing of Amundsen trip made him return with the, before the severity of weather, before the weather became really severe. Whereas Scott started later and met with severe weather conditions and it did not help to progress smoothly and complete what they went to do. What about their food, food and fuel? Um, food again is so important. You need a lot of nutrition. And what did Amundsen do? He set up three times the amount of food needed. Okay. And they, what they do is they don't carry all of it, but they set up depots. Okay. Storage spaces. And he did he had three times the amount of food needed and many depots were set up to supply food. These would be like pit stops, you can call them or way stations. And so they could get all that they needed. Whereas um, Scott underestimated the few food requirement and ran short of supplies. And don't forget, you know, Amundsen uh, used the dogs also for the much needed, you know, nutrition and whatever proteins and all that. But whereas the man hauling uh, team of Scott uh, were exhausted, they needed more fuel, more food. And in addition, if you go to the next point, clothing, right? Yes, they all took woolen clothing, underwear and so on, but uh, they say that uh, clothing were worn so, worn so tight that, uh, you know, when they sweat, the, you know, the sweat did not kind of remain there. It's in, in, in the case of Amundsen, it's very interesting. I didn't know this thing existed. Amundsen made clothing from fur and wore it loose to allow sweat to continue to circulate within that furry space so that it won't freeze and cause further uh, difficulties to the men. Amazing, I mean, there's so much of science that went into making this happen. But in other words, what they basically did was, you know, they prepared well. So the law of navigation requires that the navigator should see the road ahead. Okay, leaders, you need to see the road ahead. 
And in fact, uh, you know, there's Leroy says, quote from him, a leader is one who sees more than others see, who sees further than others see, and who sees before others do. Okay. I should have put that quote, but you know, it's interesting. If you want, you can write it down. A leader is one who sees more than others see, who sees further than others see, and who sees before others do. Okay, they, they see the road ahead. So friends, I mean, as a leader, write down this principle, see the road ahead. Secondly, what you need to do is draw on past experience, right? A good leader will draw on past experience. And I'm sure those of you who are seniors, if you've been a prefect earlier or even a class representative, whatever you call it, you will see that those past experiences help you to do better now, okay? For example, if, if you discovered that, uh, you did not balance your role in the past. Now it's a time for you to balance studies and extracurricular and your role as a leader. Because you were chosen to be a leader because you're good at all of this, isn't it? Okay, so remember. So don't forget, a good leader will also draw experience on evaluated experience. Okay, you will draw from evaluated experience because when you evaluate, you know whether you've done the right thing or the wrong thing. Whether you have done well, have you improved? Where do you need to change? Okay, that means that their decisions are based on evidence and not just wishful thinking. Okay, thirdly, listen to what others have to say. First-rate navigators always have in mind that other people are depending on them and their ability to chart a good course, okay? So navigators, right, have in mind what other people also are depending on them. So when I say, listen to what others are, have to say, doesn't mean you just listen to hundreds of voices and then miss out the main, right? But it's important, important that you focus on a few. Okay, if we were meeting uh, physically, I would have done some acti activities to demonstrate what this actually means. But anyway, nevertheless, what we are trying to say is uh, keep the need of others in mind. Don't forget why you've been, uh, you know, invited to play this role. Then, the law of navigation requires the navigator to examine conditions before making commitments, right? And even from our experience, all of us will agree, teachers will agree that a little planning can save a lot of heartache in the long run. The bigger the task or opportunity or journey, the more pre-planning we need to do, right? Okay, if you're traveling to another city, let's say Chennai or Kerala or wherever, Mumbai, you need to plan ahead. Okay, my first, uh, you know, car was a Maruti 800 and I, and the first drive I did was to Bombay and back. And uh, 20 years back. And <clears throat> what I didn't carry with me those days, you know, you have fuses for different aspects of your car functioning so that if something goes wrong, <clears throat> you just have to change the fuse. There you have it already. And here I was knowing very little about the car <clears throat> and not carrying spares. So we almost reached Bangalore, but there was nobody to help us and we had to throw ourselves back to Bangalore. Okay, but that's interesting. Now, you have to examine conditions before making your commitments. Prepare well in advance, okay? And go to trusted advisors to help you through the process, okay? Make sure you talk. Sometimes we give excuses. I spoke to that person and he told me to do this. No, 
That's not a leader. Leader. That's not. That's not how a leader responds. The leader needs to know who his trusted confidants are. Okay. Even notices that get circulated to you as leaders, there should never be a hearsay. Okay. If it's come to you by email or whatever form, you need to read it and be aware and know it. Some of you may be used to shortcuts, right? Hey, what does that thing say? Do I have to be there? What time? And then you go on texting people and asking them a hundred times, making calls to see whether or to confirm the notice that you heard about and never read. About. So remember, examine conditions. Fifthly, right? Make sure their conclusion represent both fact and faith. So it's difficult, I mean, absolutely difficult to balance optimism and realism, right? If you're optimistic at times, you may not be realistic. Intuition and planning. Some of you love to go by intuition. Many of you pass your exams based on intuition, you know, last minute, uh, tucking in whatever you need to. But it's also difficult to balance fact and faith. But that's what it takes to be effective as a navigating leader. Of course, if you look at the, you know, my first picture was a ship, right? And those days, they didn't have sophisticated instruments. Like my third diagram, okay? There are different. And if you have sat in a yacht or a ship, it's amazing, the instrument panel. It's amazing, yes, because it's so awe-inspiring. <laughs> You'll, you'll, your jaw will drop because it's, you wonder how do these guys read those panels, this instrument. But the interesting thing is, okay, they know what it means, right? Therefore, they know they're going the right direction. It wasn't so earlier. Now you have enough information to check online, right? Maybe as we are speaking, some of you are already checking, but that's the nature of our current uh, global scenario. There's information overload, there's so much. So none of us have an excuse or we cannot say we didn't know about it. Okay, so let's go into our breakout rooms. Okay, what I want you to do is, I'm going to share a few points here. Okay, the acronym we have before us is uh, plan ahead. Okay, how do we become good navigators? We plan ahead. Okay, here they are. One, predetermine a course of action. Lay out your goals. Adjust your priorities. Notify key personnel. Okay, that is right when you say predetermine a course. So let's take the example of, okay, let's do a fun thing. And you're saying, uh, all of you I know are involved in your house groups and you, are, you encourage participation. That can be a challenge. Teachers are saying, widen the participation, right? Or of course, at times they may say, get the best so that we get the trophy this year also, right? But you may feel maybe we should get more people involved. So, so that's your key assignment right now. Okay, take some time and use these principles. Plan a course of action. In other words, what will you do? What is your goal? Your goal is to encourage more participation from Theobald House or whatever. Wilcox, your house, right, mates? How will you adjust your priority? Because it means you need to text them, you need to write to them, you need to find key people, okay? I won't give you too many uh, words. Who are the key personnel, all right? Allow time for acceptance, head into action, expect problems, always point to the successes, and daily review your, your, your plan. What you're gonna do now is take this case study and you're saying, Encourage participation in house activities. Okay, write that down. And go through this, uh, you know, nine points here. 
and don't have to be too elaborate because otherwise, you know, as the questions or titles suggest, you might repeat yourself. So just a line or two. Okay, I've already laid out the goal. What is the goal? <clears throat> Encourage participation in the how and in the school activities by your house, uh, whatever members. So adjust your priorities. What do you need to focus on? What should you give up? What should you emphasize more? And these activities are seasonal, right? From which month to which month are these activities? Anybody? Usually not close to exams, or is it through the year? What do you think? Captain? Uh, so most of the time it happens during August. So, but with August. So you oh, with the okay. new semester plan. This year it was a lot quicker. Everything happened almost together. Almost? Almost at the same time. So it was oh, back, okay. back this year. It was quite packed, yes. Yeah. So so you know when the season is, you know when the pressure is on each of the prefects. So go ahead, make your plan and then I'm going to hear quickly from all of you on different aspects. Okay, so go ahead, write it down. 10 minutes. And you don't need discussion. So we won't, don't put them in groups yet, ma'am. So this is going to be on your own, alone, okay? Everybody with me? Yes. Okay, good. Is that a relevant activity for you all? It is. Okay, because that's one way you'll apply it. Go ahead. <clears throat>
We have used around seven minutes. You have uh, three minutes more. If you're done, you can indicate. Okay, another minute to go. I hope you can wind up. And uh, we're just doing it in an example. If you're already following it, I'm sure you would have done it quickly and you would have enjoyed it. So otherwise, we will learn together as we listen to one another. So we won't all share all steps. I'm going to ask, you know, uh, different people to share. So those who have already been talking, we we'll give the others an opportunity. Okay, so we're going to start with the younger ones and then we'll move upwards. Okay, 30 seconds more and then we'll do this. So I gave you all a common goal so that we can have a common you know, discussion around that. Was that okay with you, the common goal? If you're able to open your mic, you, you're allowed to speak. Yes. So, yes, okay. Shriya, did you find it interesting? Yes. Priya, is that how you pronounce? Ajish, George, you're there, right? Okay, Cheryl, is, is that a teacher or a student? Oh, that's a teacher. <laughs> Sorry, ma'am. Yes, I'm just looking at the screen for any indication that student screens are coming on. So tell me. Students. <clears throat> Put on your cameras. Let's talk a little. Ah, thank you. Yes. Okay. So go ahead. Um, you laid out the goal, right? Now, of course predetermine a course of action. Mentally, you may have determined what you want to achieve as a result of this exercise. Anybody has an answer for that? Hmm? So just to increase registration from your house in school. Pardon? Just to increase registration in the event from your house. Okay, a general line about it. Okay, anyone else has a, something different that you mentioned? <clears throat> yeah, because you want your house. You may think, oh, last year my house didn't do well. Okay, if I get selected, or of course, last year you may have said prefect didn't work hard enough. But now that you're in those shoes, right? The pressure is on you. Nihal, you have something to say? Nihal Cherian. About the same uh, predetermined course of action, sir. Yeah. Uh, I think maybe we should uh, have an idea of how many people we want for the event to contact who we feel could be uh, a proper liable person. 
Good, good, yes. Samia? <clears throat> yeah, um, adding on to what Nihal said, I think we should also account for the numbers and also have some backups in mind in case the required participation is not met. Good, so you are preparing your mind, okay? Predetermine a course of action. <clears throat> and of course, the points there are even more, you know, helpful and elaborate. So what goal was set, right? Everybody saw that message, encourage participation in house activities. Because the load may be on a few students all the time, okay? So what is adjust your priorities? Jeremy, did you fill that one? Janelle, Austin, Rushil, anyone, go ahead. I'm just calling names, but even others can speak up. What did you write for adjust your priorities? Nandita, I see your camera is open. So I think we should prioritize while trying to get as many participants as possible, trying to get them to um, do their best and not just uh, everyone giving their name and doing whatever they feel like. Just making sure that everyone does the maximum that they can. Mm. Okay. Okay, so you're adjusting your priorities. What else did you understand it as? What else have you written? So for adjusting your priorities itself? Yeah, yeah. Anyone else can. I like your answer. What about others? Joanna? Yes. Who, who is that? So, Jedi. Jedi. Okay, Jedi. So, yeah. focusing on those who are good at, at this particular event and then moving on to the ones who can increase the participation. Okay, so he's focusing on the priority of participation in terms of who's good and so on. Okay, what else? Good thinking. Um, so I felt that we have to audition students for various events based on the order of the date of the event. Okay. So that so we can prioritize yes. our work. Another good idea, audition, right? Okay. Good. Don't wait for me to ask you, but go ahead. Feel free. I think it's important you give focus to the things your house is good at. I mean, of course, you want to do good at everything, but give a lot of importance to something you're already good at and try to do your best in that. Okay, and who said that? Pratiksha. Okay, so give me your name too because I don't see everybody on the screen, you know. Um, okay, excellent. So audition, you're talking about, you know, acceptance and so on. Um, so adjusting your priorities, remember you are charting the course and guiding them. So you're also focusing on yourself, correct? So what would you adjust in your life to do that role well? Because the goal, the key word is encourage. So how will you, as a prefect, encourage them? Add a few more points if something comes on the top of your head. So because you have to study, you have to keep up with the activities, the assignments, right? and all the extra things that come with being a leader. And you did not, I mean, you did not anticipate that. So now with this very focused effort and notice some of you as leaders are good at getting others to do the work. Some of you are quite excitable, right? You get so involved, you use up all your energy, which is good which motivates participation because when they see the captain or the prefect or whoever you are uh, so involved, everybody wants you know, to flow with your energy and enthusiasm, which is very good. But you would also notice and the bargain, it's impacting your time at home and studies and assignments may be lagging. So how do you adjust your priorities? What do you do then? Anybody? So by building a schedule, 
Okay. Yeah, mention your name as you talk so I don't have to scan the Okay, thank you. So schedule, very good. Anyone else? What would you do? Uh, so just to reiterate a point uh, made by Hepsiba in the chat, to uh, it's to stop wasting your time on social media and such by setting a time limit or so on your apps. So right. it's double the productivity. Okay, double the productivity. Interesting. Okay, all of us have the same amount of time, but what Hepsiba and you know uh, who else was there? Yeah, he said. Uh, avoid wastage of time on social media. Okay, and use that time to plan effectively. I think that's a very crucial point because uh, you're saying, oh, the load is too much. We are not able to study. That line should never come there. And leaders have to stretch a little more than the others. And in fact, you are given that leadership because you have the capacity to do something. Okay, good, good. Then what is, it? okay, notify key personnel. Right, going back to this whole encouraging participation. What, does, what did you write under that? Anyone else for the first time speaking here? So that would be teachers, it would be anyone who would know valid participants. Um, that would be good at the tasks. Uh, just your fellow prefect body, things like that. Okay. Did you all get that? Anyone else has another angle to it? So uh, probably following up on those who have given their name. Okay, very good. What if I key people? And so remember, if you have to make this very specific, this is where probably most of us lose out, okay? Don't just say notify key people. How many will that be? Okay, you mentioned teachers, students, right? Those who've been auditioned. Specify numbers. If your plan has to succeed, you need to specify, right? Because otherwise it will be very general unless you're aiming right, you won't get it right. So specify a number. So the first person who shared, how will you redo what, I, what you mentioned, not if I key personal? How will you rewrite that sentence? Do you all have a number? Is it 50? Is it 100? How many in your house? How many students? Do you all know the number of students in your each of your house? It's absolutely quiet. Come on. I'm not really aware, sir. So. Not aware. So if you have to chart the course, if you have to direct your team and navigate them get your facts right, right? We saw that in the earlier slide, didn't we? Hmm? Getting facts right, where is that now? Go back. Conclusion represent both fact and faith. Don't blindly follow, right? And this whole slide was a lot about listen what others say, examine conditions, make sure your conclusions are based on fact, right? drawn so so notice so thank you for that honest response but what if teachers know you can tell okay uh, how many do you think approximately in each of the group now you need to choose what percentage of them could be involved in activities because if you don't have a number we may end up you know not doing anything at all because we don't have statistics Right, so put that point down. Because you need cheer team, right? On a sports day, for example, you need a cheer team. How many go into a cheer? So if people don't want to specifically participate, put them all in the cheer team. Work with the ones who are more specifically eager to involve, okay? 
And uh, are you with me on that? Notified. And then choose key personnel from that team of 100 who can lead these particular teams. Right? And saying one person will go get the names of all those who are good at athletics. And then you test them out. Or the word is audition for other debating, music, elocution, and so on. Okay. What is allowed time for acceptance? Okay, let's go quickly on the other one. I'm running out of time. A lot of time for acceptance is basically you get their buy-in. Some leaders force people to take part. It works sometimes, but most of the time people want, they should feel that they want to participate. If they're not motivated, it's difficult. So allow time to, for them to accept. Give them room for them to accept, right? Then headed to action. Did you all write that? Why is everybody so absolutely quiet? Did you all do that activity? Yes, sir. For now, time for acceptance, I put down that uh, if we have been given a week to get people, we should uh, tell them that there are four or five days until registration closes so that if others come, there's still uh, two, three days for them Correct. to register. Correct. And uh, sometimes you may find that people lack the initiative, okay? Or they may miss the deadline. So that's where your role is to encourage, make announcements, okay? Find the right people. So allow them time, seek their support. So there are two kinds, yes. I have a point for, um... For the allow time for the acceptance, we could um, tell the benefits of the event or the competition. Like, for example, like one, you would learn some important life skills like public speaking skills. So very you could good. give the benefits so they would like to participate. Absolutely. That's a very good point. So you're also giving them the pros and cons, right? Of course, the cons of it, they already know. They don't want to give time. The pros, yes. What? How will they benefit? Wonderful, thank you for that. So you're giving them time to think, yes, somebody else to add on to that. To add on to that, I think it's important we uh, figure out ways to incentivize events in general. Okay, and how will you incentivize? What's your idea? Any thoughts? I No, I just thought about that we should focus on incentivizing. Okay, chocolates, yes. And some, some, of, the, some of the incentives are just being together just getting a kick out of, you know, the fun and laughter and, you know, loudness. And then, of course, points for the school or the team, right? Excellent. Yes, incentives are always good. But there's something called, so that's uh, in motivation, we talk about intrinsic motivators. Okay, incentives are external, like a carrot stick to a horse, okay? And some people, unfortunately, work more on incentives. But while that is important, see if you can, you know, look for intrinsic motivators. Okay, what is it that will take for this person to get involved? You know, some guys are there. Only if their friends are involved, they will take part. So tell them you can form a relay team with all your friends who can run, of course. <laughs> so, you know, so that you can, that's an incentive. So he feels good about it. And these are some things, excellent, yeah. What is action? Sarah Anthony, now I see some names. Joanna Ebenezer, you look like seniors, are you there? Uh, yes, sir, I'm here. Go I'm ahead. Here. Action. action, yeah, what about action, what is it? Um, yes, sir. So, I think this applies for when you're leading a group event. Like, um, let's say that you're leading a group event. The first thing that, uh, as a leader, the first thing you need to do is clear your mind and get things right and uh, plan everything. And then only your team members can work effectively as such. So um, to head into action is to like plan each and everything properly, 
and make sure that you're in that mode of action so like your everyone else in the team can follow suit. Okay. Anyone else? Action. Thank you. Thank you. Was it Sarah? Yes, Who sir. Spoke? Okay. Thank you, Sarah. Okay. Very important. Make your list. Make your action plans. Who else? Joanna, are you there? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Um, a plan for action would be to start practicing and then try to solve problems which arise from there. Okay, so you apply, you practice, and then solve the problems. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Come on. So we need to focus on the students for doing the particular participation. So like we need to like put pressure on them. That's known as action. So. Okay, put pressure. Okay. And interesting, just to quickly, you know, make this point. Action items should be very clearly written down with a date. You all missed it because that's where the problem comes. That's why we don't achieve a lot of things. So specify, I will prepare info. So for example, if uh, August is the month where activities happen, you probably have to start in July, okay? Or whenever is convenient. So prepare an info sheet by July 5th, 5th, one of you said, no, give them information about the activities. Then call for a meeting on July 6th, as specific as that, 4 p.m. Okay, that means you have to go talk to the teacher, get permission uh, for a room. I'm just giving some random thoughts, or if it is a notice, talk to your teacher in charge of the house and tell them, ma'am, can we do this? Okay, because you're going to do this in conjunction or in consultation with them. Right, you see that step by step. Okay, then by July 10th, all tasks should be assigned. Right, that means in four days time, once you've called for a meeting, you told them these are the lists, so you make a list along with the, when the meeting is happening, before that, your list should be ready. Okay, MUN, activity, who are the participants? Okay, athletics, sports day, basketball, music, cultural events, everything. And then you start getting the names because you lose that very precious opportunity. By 10th, you finalize the names, correct? And then you call for an audition on 11th. So, the dates are very important. What time will you do it? Which room will you do it? Because accordingly, then you can work towards. And then check on them every week. That's an action plan. Have a check-in every Monday with my team. Okay, so you chose 100. Out of that, you have 50, right? You have people who are focused. So are you getting with me? Very often, we leave the action out, including in our study plan. We say, I want to finish by so-and-so date before my, what is that, midterm exam, correct? But unfortunately, you don't specify which subject, when, what, how. So we leave it and then we feel a tremendous pressure. So along with all your other things, please mention these things also. So that you can have everything worked up. Are you with me? Yes, yes, thumbs up from everyone. Yes. Any questions? And final few points. What are the problems that you will face? Expect problems. Come on, come on. I'm sure you'd love to talk about this. People who don't will to participate. Yes, full of excuses. You know, avoid you, run away. Okay, and not only they give excuses, they take few others with them. Okay, great. What else? People so who don't also... participate in the last minute. Last minute, okay. Giving heart. Huh? <laughs> okay, last minute disappearance, okay. Right, so that's a, yes. Uh, so, and also there may be people like the participants who may fall sick or some problems may arise at home for which they may be unable to participate. So I think we should also keep backup, like about four to five students who can like, or substitute for them. Very good. Yes, thank you, Dorothy. 
So in stark contrast to what Christy said, another problem that arises is people who uh, want to participate at the last minute, even though we've already given due dates in advance. Correct, yes. Yeah, they want to, they just see the excitement in the last minute. So, so remember, there are people who feel good at a certain point, some who don't feel good. Okay, these are all part of behavior. Maybe one session I'll try to do on that aspect, though we plan the aid. But it's so important to, to read what people are and understand them. That's a good point, too. Yes. So, how will you accommodate them? That's a problem. A headache on your, uh, on your head, right? Yes, like I'm sure the teachers and principal go through his last minute, influential people pushing for admissions. What do you do? Okay, huge issue. Okay, come on, what else? Expect problems. Jeremy, you haven't said anything. Uh, so I have a point for this. So if a problem arises at the last minute and uh, for, for example, if a student in in the if a student is participating in in MUN, and if the student doesn't have research and goes on till the last minute and tells that in the last minute, we try instead of getting frustrated, we help them. We help them with research. We give them points on how to research. We we go with them and we help them. So we always promise to help them in in beginning it's in the beginning itself when they uh, given the names to participate. Very good because remember. You're a leader and leaders have to anticipate, right? You have to see all aspects. You're thinking of an issue that may arise even before others can think of it. And I know maybe now you'll allow the teachers to do all the thinking because they've been at it for some time now. But if you want to learn to be a good leader, you need to anticipate, okay, where the problems will come from. That's a good point. And then, of course, always point to the successes. What do you mean by that? Okay, I see another. Charan is there, Ben Chaco, Thomas Koshi. I just moved the slide so I can see more names. All your pictures looks like, you know, it's on the notice, but nobody has opened their camera. Are you guys there? Yes, over you. Okay, go, go ahead. ahead yes, Charan, Thomas Koshi, Alina, Sarah, Kredita, Varma, so many names. Come on, speak up. Yes, I'd love sir, to um, hear you. Yes. In Thanks, this Thomas. online time, some students may have a difficulty to either like upload the file or rename the file or some difficulties like that. So get the thing ready at least a day before and then have 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 the things needed for them. Okay, that's a very practical thought there because teachers will be aware, you know, all these excuses, it seems like at times that the drive didn't open, the link didn't come, you know, students not submitting their assignments in time. So we all know what it's like and online hasn't made anything easier. It may have made things more complicated and can be frustrating because you're not directly interacting with uh, students. Thank you, Thomas. That's a good point. Rehan, Hannah, Joby. Yes. So many of you. Nice smiling faces I see here. Come on, speak up. So following with uh, Thomas' point, I feel that we need to have mock, uh, like su suppose you need to submit in on online. Uh, instead of waiting till the last day for the submission, you should predetermine yourself that there will be problems and you should try, try to have mock submissions before it. Okay, if it, if you got the time and it works, why not, Jadaida? Thank you. Joanna, you have something to share? Sarah, yeah. I see a lot of cameras opening. That's really nice. Prerita, yes, yeah, sir. go ahead. Yes. Yeah, so um, adding to that point, some people, especially on stage events, they have uh, stage fright. So I believe that leaders and also we get along the whole team and try to like uh, fight their stage fright and also encourage them that it is possible. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. I think that's good. That's really good. Yes, Alina. Uh, so another thing is that um, like especially many of these like Mon and all many of them will have so many doubts 
and questions so um so like prepare like what like uh, what kind of questions they will ask so that you will know how to answer them and clarify them so that they can understand it and they will be more motivated to participate right. yes yes anticipate questions good that's a leader's role yes christy do you have something to add so uh, like prayer said we should if someone has stage fright we should um eliminate that stage fear from them so that Correct. they can give them the maximum output when they are on stage and that's why i'm encouraging you all to keep your cameras open that's one way to overcome all these anxieties asha do you have something to add not really um mainly those points itself yes oh, okay so always point to successes see sometimes we as leaders we are under pressure we are anxious okay deadlines are nearing and you can become very harsh okay you can be very uh, discouraging demeaning well you didn't mean it but then you your words come out like that right so be careful be an encourager that's the key word there how to encourage participation we are not saying how to push people into participation we are not saying how to force people be an encourager and when you're naturally a good encourage your people want to support and want to help and want you know it's a very practical issue we picked up today isn't it and i'm sure that this would be of some help okay daily review your plan now that is something we have to do either in the evening when do you all review do you have a habit of reviewing your plans your daily schedules any examples Uh, sir what i thought was we should write it down and stick it up on a wall or on your cupboard or something so right without anything without a fail you'll be seeing the plans that you made yes nehal and i can see that you've stuck some stuff on the wall next to you right it's not a screen saver right good one no. yes yes he's really practicing what he's suggesting post it even if you use a laptop often there are small reminder notes that you can stick here and they're very good you can use your phone screen saver so it can pop up reminders if you put an alarm it will pop up and say call me hal 3 pm you have all the possible gadgets there and apps these days that can help you so you just have to delete a few of those you know games and stuff like that and add these <laughs> okay good was that helpful we took up a very practical issue some of you may have already been doing it but i want to encourage you okay so yeah i think we reached the last slide and then i thought i'll show this again once more anyone can steer a ship okay one anyone can steer a ship but it takes a leader to chart the course and it's not easy okay we all, we all love we think leadership is about getting behind the wheel and taking control because we love control but leadership can be very challenging it's all the unpleasant and what we call dirty job that we have to do in other words we have to dirty our hands to see you know your house be successful yes you may be forgotten ignored you may be sidelined they may not acknowledge the fact that you did all the hard work doesn't matter leaders are willing to sacrifice and make things happen right so good i think we did good we started a little late so i took the liberty to go a little longer and there was permission from teacher but thank you all thank you and please apply it starting today do not wait this is not just a feel good uh, session we try to keep it as practical as possible okay because theory is plenty friends you can you can do a better talk than i do if you want to because there's theory out there but the practicality is when you start putting it on paper and trying it out and failing and trying again till you can uh say that you're some sort of a success okay so god bless you and uh god be with you over to ma'am
Thank you very much, sir, for that uh, very interactive session. And thank you, Prefix, for your valuable inputs. I hope it will be practical and useful for you. And many of you are already practicing it. We know it. Thank you very much. Um, I would invite Ben Chaco, Vice Captain, Redwood House, to help us with the final prayer. Let's uh, reflect on what we just heard and uh, we'll bow our heads in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this uh, lovely day you've given us, Lord. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity where we could uh, listen to your word and we could listen to life's lessons in leadership. And uh, we pray that all these lessons that we learn today may be fruitful in our lives, Lord. And we pray that you lead us um, and we may be an example to other people's, people around us, Lord. So we thank you for this wonderful institution, uh, the Board of Management, trustees, staff. We thank you and bless all of them, Lord. We pray for Mr. Jacob Isaac. Thank you for bringing, us, bringing him into our lives, Lord, and teaching us these values. We pray that you bless all of us and keep us safe as we part ways from here. We thank you for this lovely day, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, sir, once again. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Paul, for joining. Have a nice day. Thank you. Yes, thanks. Thank you.